Linda, you uh, were a supporter of Bernie Sanders in the primary, as were was I, as was Matt Lieb, um, and sadly didn't pull through, didn't make it. And now we're left with, you know, putting all the eggs in this Biden basket and asking people to vote for him. How has that process been for you? Um, and how are you feeling about this election right now? It's a lot of questions. It's not that we didn't make it. We got robbed again. Let's just be clear about what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still sad. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had moments of depression about the whole situation. And then every time we, I find myself in the moment and people think that this is some cliche thing that Bernie bros do, but it's really the truth. Bernie would have won. Bernie would have won. Bernie would have won. And that's kind of where I'm still at right now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I haven't been talking too much because I feel like the, the concerns that people have and the valid concerns they have around the Biden uh Harris ticket are true and I can't argue them away. And what I've been telling people is if, if for, any, for no other reason, but for your friends who are on the front lines, I'm just asking for a better opponent. Like I can't fight fascists. Like I'm not, I wasn't made for that. Like I'm not here. To, <laughs> there's no way there was, there's no way I, I could do. I, there's nothing that we have done over the last four years that has pushed Donald Trump or his administration, even a step forward towards something that we would be helpful to the marginalized people that we organize with and for. It just yeah. doesn't work. I may be able to delay some things. I may be able to stop some things, but I can't push anybody forward. So all I'm asking for is give me a better opponent. And right now, the only other choice we have is give me Biden and Harris and be ready to fight under the Biden Harris administration more than you did under the Trump administration. So what I'm worried about, and I think people are worried about yeah. is that we defeat the fascists and then all the white women with the pussy hats are going to go back home because they're going to be like, my job is done here. And uh -huh. what we hope happens is that you all stay in the streets with the black and the brown and the indigenous and the undocumented, and the LGBTQ people and all the folks that have and were on the streets way before there ever was a Donald Trump. So I see yeah. both arguments. So I'm just saying to people, I'm not with the Biden-Harris campaign. As you all know, the Biden campaign had to come out and tell their friends, you know, all the right wing Zionists. Uh, yeah. we, ain't, we ain't with this lady. She got no affiliation to the campaign, which, by the way, I could have paid them to say that because the people <laughs> were so ridiculous. No, listen, people were trolling me online, and I don't mean the white supremacists and the right wing Zionists. Leftists were like, oh, Linda must have got bought. Linda must have got this. She may be. And uh -huh. then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Biden campaign, a white man in the Biden campaign says, we're not affiliated with this lady. She ain't with the campaign. She don't work for us. And I said, thank you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. On the, and I took, I literally took the guy's quote. His name is Andrew Bates and works at the campaign. I literally, I was texting that to everybody. I, was <laughs> that people. I said, see, I told you I didn't sell out. Anyway, so but how do you how do you grapple with that that fact, the fact that you're here doing this work, talking to progressives and leftists saying we have to vote for Biden to get the fascist out. And, and simultaneously, you're basically being attacked by the Biden campaign. How do you hold those two things? Oh, I mean, it's it's a perfect thing to hold for me because it gives me all the ammunition that I need to fight this administration once they get into office. Like I am mm -hmm. going to be Biden's worst nightmare and I'm mm -hmm. ready for that. And it's going to be the kind of fight that I know we're going to see some progress. A lot of people look at the Obama administration and I say to people, anything that you applauded Obama for, for the some things that he did, like, for example, DACA, that wasn't because B Obama woke up one morning and had an mm -hmm. epiphany and it was like, let me help the undocumented kids. Those kids were chaining themselves to the White House. They were getting arrested. They were doing major civil disobedience, major mobilization. They were one of the most active movements under the Obama administration. Yes. And they got mm -hmm. some of the things that they needed. Obviously, they didn't get all that they were fighting for, but there was some progress there. So I'm ready to fight. And that's I, I'm built to fight neoliberals. Like, I'm not here to I wasn't born <laughs> to fight fascist folks. I was I was here to fight the neoliberals. This is the perfect administration for that. And to be honest, like the people on the street are tired. People are exhausted. I'm exhausted. I feel like the last four years have been like 40 years. So just give us yeah. a little space to build some movement, build some power, and then we're going to come back four years later swinging and it ain't going to be neoliberals in four years. Mm. I love it. I, I you know, I, I take my cues from someone like you because you've been on the front lines. You've been doing this hard work, whether it's now in Louisville uh, around Breonna Taylor or from from the Women's March from the very beginning. Right. And I think it is important before we start playing purity politics to really think about folks 
folks who are on the front lines and what they're going through. I will say that there's been a big discussion around, well, BLM started under Obama and and all the, you know, and, and the ergo Obama was terrible. And it's like, no, 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 you don't understand social movements. BLM starts under Obama because there was space. First of all, there was net need and there was egregious things being done, you know, innocent black people mm. being killed by police. But there was space to be actually able to mobilize and march rather than boot on neck, mm -hmm. you know, ridiculousness, which is I mean, we've seen BLM pop off now, but I don't think we would have seen it had there not been the foundation set up for all these years in advance. Um, oh, absolutely. And there have been movements there. There there, ha there has never been really any like end to a movement. I mean, movements are ever evolving, like women's movement. I mean, we're fighting right now around issues related to women's rights and women's reproductive rights that women were fighting about 50 years ago. I mean, racial justice issues, economic justice issues, issues around the climate, LGBTQ issues, religious freedom issues, like the movements never end. There's just different iterations of them. And so what I say to people all the time is like, look, I'm 40 years old. I feel like I'm 80 and I just need folks to give me a break. Just give me a break. Give me Biden Harris. I promise I'm a fight, but at least I'm going to know that I can move a little bit. I could move the needle. Give me an opportunity. Let's win back the Senate also, because the other thing here, put Biden and Trump to the side. I got Senate races. I need Sarah Gideon yeah. in Maine. Mm -hmm. I got, I got Jamie Harrison in South yeah. Carolina. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I got Raphael Warnock in Georgia. Like there are actually good Senate candidates right now that can help us win back the Senate. And then I'm going to promise you, if you help me win back the Senate, I will get Medicare for all. And then I will triple dare Biden to get a Medicare for all bill on that desk and for him not to sign it because all hell will break loose in America if Biden gets a Medicare for all bill on his desk. So the people just got to see there's a game. We're, we got, we know how to play chess too. Um, yeah. The Republicans have been playing chess for a long time. The question is, are we ready to play some chess? And the Democrats have not played chess. They took over literally a quarter of the federal judges on the benches have all been appointed by Donald Trump. Yeah. They, got the, they got the freaking Supreme Court. And you know what they're sitting back? They're all like, we got what we wanted. They don't even care about the presidency right now. They're like, take it. Because we already yeah, yeah, got yeah. a lot of what we wanted. And they've been working on this for 30 years. What have we been working on for 30 years is what I want to know. Somebody tell me mm. what are the big milestones that the Democrats were waiting to have. I haven't seen it in my lifetime, and I'm hoping that that changes really soon. It's just hard because when you're the party of life, which I believe Democrats generally are like, hey, we believe in life, living. Doesn't mean we're pro-life. We believe in choice. But like... It's it's we have a lot of issues, whereas like the party of death is very simple. It's like money, 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 death, 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 simple. <laughs> you know, like, that's why, like they're, they're very tunnel vision about it. Yeah. We've got a whole lot of issues to to, to work out. Um, but I, I do think, you know, Biden's doing more events and it never he never ceases to disappoint me in his performance. I'm just going to be real. Like, it's so like. It's so hard. It's so hard to watch him. Um, I don't think it's hard because he's God, I'm not as offended politically by him, but I'm like, just one answer, just stick one landing, just do something that's a little bit inspiring. And I don't get that. But once again, like the, the alternative is not a real alternative for me. Um, I mean, it's the position that we were put in. 